How's it going, Farmer Life family? Back again, and I know Team Awesome, you guys are gonna love this. We got more types of meliponas. Remember, I was telling you there's 40 different types in this country. There's 40 different types of bees that are their honey is really medicinal, and they pollinate these fruit trees all on our farm, and and they don't sting. They're not dangerous at all. Uh, you see one back here, right here, the the uh, the Mariola is really great for the eyes. There's that one right there, and now. Now we've got, and I've always heard about the noni bee. And this particular bee really, really likes the noni fruit tree. It's always on it. Always on it. And my friend Harold here, Harold is a professional with, with this. With, um, he has a business with the African bees. I mean, this guy literally, he doesn't even need the suit. They love him so much, and bees really feel vibration, as we know, right? And so he can literally walk into these African bees without the white suit on, and they won't sting him. Um, he has he has really a talent for these these bees in, in Spanish is abejas um, So this is Harold right here now Harold doesn't speak a lot of English So I'm going to translate as much as I can into any kind of more information that he can give us about these two Different types of meliponas because personally I have to be honest. I don't know a whole lot about them So we're gonna get a couple little cool things from Harold because he knows he's one of the tops in this country for not only the Mariola bees that don't sting, but he has a business with the stinging bees where he sells the pollen, right? The honey, um, the propolis, all of it. Royal jelly, the whole thing, he sells it. And it is absolutely raw, medicinal, and amazing. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna do the African bees here because my wife is terrified if someone gets stung. And it's, it's true, if any of you guys coming down here has an allergy, it can be kind of a dangerous situation. But we're going to put all these friendly non-stinging bees. My idea is to get all 40 all around this farm. Not only for the medicinal properties, but also, you know, just so they can pollinate the trees, you know. So, Harold, um, uh, I'm going to say, uh, t t tell us, diga nosotros un poco cosas en esta abeja. Tell us a little bit about these bees. Bueno, esto es un melipona. This is a melipona, one of the 40. Le gusta el noni. They love the noni tree. Primero, extraer savia de la, fru de la fruta. Yep. Es un pegamento, un glue. Okay, they extract the glue of the fruit. If you notice, the noni tree here is really unripe. It's completely, it's not in its ripe stage for us to eat. But notice the bees love it in this stage, and they're extracting the glue. Okay, está bien. Y también la miel. And, al and also flor. the honey that's coming out of the flower, the little tiny flower that the noni tree creates. You gotta love it. Es al inicio de las flores, right. el, el nonis siempre florea, es una semana o dos semanas de continuidad de la flor. Ok, so en, after one or, or two weeks, the bees just continue extracting the nectar from the flower. Después de que la flor ha terminado, ya queda parte de, del fruto donde ellas extraen yeah. el líquido de la flor. I see. Para so trabajar. After, after about a couple of weeks, this flower finishes up. And then the bees go to this little gluey part that the fruit starts to create during its process of being a fruit for us to eat. Estas abejas tienen algo diferente que algunas otras especies. Ellas pueden romper las flores y extraer el polen, la miel de adentro que otras especies no, no pueden. Ellas muerden y abren las flores. Wow, so they actually put the pollen and the, and the honey inside the flower, mm. adentro. Wow, that's incredible. Ooh, some sí. just new stuff. I had no idea that. This this guy right here is the man, Harold. He's awesome. Now, I tell you what, we just constructed in past videos, we showed you these boxes, right? You just saw the Mariolas, were really great for the eyes um, for glaucoma. Um, now we've constructed a box right next to we've got a noni tree here, a noni tree there, and we've got two more noni trees over here. So these bees will I mean We'll have plenty of, of space. So come with us down here and we'll show you the box. Not only will they have plenty of space, but they have plenty of fruit to, to extract the pollen from. And then they're gonna, they've got their own little home now right here. Super duper close by all the four noni trees that we have. Okay? Okay, this one has a little this bee, this bee doesn't sting, but it is a little bit aggressive. 
Like, so right. if you're trying to bother the box, it might, it might come on your face or your head a little bit, but it will never sting you because it doesn't have a stinger. Para extraer la miel, lo que hay que hacer es mover la caja to un poco. To extract the honey. Like once a year, all these little bees, these are little guys, generally in, in Febrero, right? Mm -hmm. In February, you'd extract the honey from all these little boxes, right? And we'll do another video, so stay tuned on that when we do that. But for this particular black um, um, noni honeybee, um, you would need to move the box. So you open this up, the black bees leave the nest, and then, you, and then when they leave, you move the box over here, so that way all the bees are right here, waiting for the box to come back, and then you, you extract the miel from what, allá? Yeah. Cuantos met metros? Puede moverlo 10 metros aquí, uh -huh. mover la caja, para que las abejas salen. You gotta love this, like the, the noise, you just knock. Maybe there's a special knock that you talk to the queen bee about, maybe it's <laughs> Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's like a special code, like a secret knock. And then all the bees come out. This particular black bee, they all come out. You go 10 meters over there, extract the miel, and then bring it back here, and then the bees just come right in. So it's nothing. You're not, you're not um, being destructive to, to the bees here at all. Hmm. Just using little techniques to extract the miel a little bit more efficiently. You can have one of those little, you know, those bee hats or whatever, but you re you don't really need one of those. It's actually really fun. As far as we talked about vibration, and we do that a lot here on the farm, if your vibration on this farm is really loving and you go to bees with love and respect, they, they, won't, they won't be aggressive to you. Um, I've done that experiment enough with Harold and with his African bees. They really won't. It has to do, the bees will feel you. Los abejas al siento usted, right? They, they feel your energy. I siento su energía. Su energía. If, if your energy is aggressive, well, then they may be aggressive. So, uh, you, know, uh, you know, your energy is, is loving and peaceful. Bees will not. They, they, feel, they feel energy. They really do. A whole lot better than we do. And then they won't mess with you. So, all right. So that's, and then we've got another one coming up. Another type of bee that I really have no idea about. So Harold's going to help us out a little bit. So these guys are little black noni bees. And by the way, I've heard medicinally, these bees are absolutely incredible for everything, for the skin, internally, um, for allergies. They're absolutely amazing. Well, we all know the noni is like a superfood, right? Well, it would make perfect sense that the honey of the noni tree would be super, super medicinal for many different things. See you guys in two seconds. Farm and Life family, like I said, we're back in two minutes. You didn't really know that, but it has really been five, two minutes, five minutes, maybe five and a half. Um, anyway, this is my uh, notorious sidekick, Harold, my Spanish partner in crime. And, and he knows everything about meliponas. And he was just telling me, it's interesting, he was telling me that they don't even know, they don't even know, like, some. there's, there's, there's many different species that they're even finding out about of the, what they call meliponas, which is the group name. They're studying them. They don't even have names for some of them. Um, the two we're putting here on the farm, they do. Um, I forgot just a few minutes ago to tell you what the name of the black ones are. I don't know the English name yet. I'm sorry. But the Spanish name is... El nombre común es Aragle. The name common is Aragle. Aragle. And, and that's the black bee that we just talked about um, that's really medicinal honey. Now we're off to a new one. As you, as you can see here... This one, it's a little bit different. It doesn't have the pretty little stand. It's not up high off the ground because these bees, Harold was telling me, actually like it low, muy abajo, right? They like it low because it's nice and cool. Notice we're under a tree here um, because they like this kind of climate and they like it low to the ground. Um, this nest was, um, it was extracted from the ground, right, La Tierra. So, so, so we've got to make it as close to the ground as possible. And we're getting ready to, to open this and because he just extracted the whole nest, it's huge. And and then and also we're gonna take some of the honey out too. So let's take a look. Mirar. Look at the bees, everybody. Okay, what's uh, el nombre de este? Nombre común culo de buey. The the name common of this one is called culo de buey. It's like uh, he was trying to explain to me it's a name of an animal, but guys, for the English translation. Give me a little time.
Be patient with uh, Dr. Brian. Um, but look at, I mean, but look at this. This is just, this is a huge nest. And what's important about when, when Harold extracts the nest is that the queen, Lorena, right? That's, that's queen in, in Spanish. The queen's got to be in here. If the queen's not in here, see you later. Goodbye. They're all going to leave. And so when he extracts these nests, the queen's got to be in here. Um, and obviously the queen is because he's got the whole thing. It's wow, absolutely beautiful. Mucho miel adentro, see? Put extract all on miel hoy. I asked him if we could extract some honey today. Oh, we're gonna do it right now, people. Look at look at this little bit of yellow. See how small they are? How beautiful and friendly they are. I mean, these guys are real friendly. They're not aggressive at all. Like the black ones are a little bit aggressive, but they don't bite you at all. Um, oh, here comes. Mm -hmm. Look at look at that rich. They always say the darker the honey, the more minerals, enzymes, enzymes it has. And look at that. That was dark. That was dark. That was like a dark Guinness. You guys don't have to drink look, Guinness look, anymore. Now you can drink different honey. Color. Wow. La some misma, different... La misma abeja. Hay miel de diferentes ar árboles. Mm -hmm. en, en diferentes uh, tiempos. Entonces la miel cambia en la misma. Wow. So in, in different little little pockets, he was saying, sometimes the honey's a little bit lighter, sometimes a little bit darker. You know, again, like just this beautiful eclectic mix of vitamins and minerals, a little bit different. Let, let's try this, people. So I'm pretend like you're actually trying this while I'm doing it. Here we go. It's up to my mouth. But you out there in TV land or computer land are trying it with me. Here we go. Isn't that good? You tasted it with me. <laughs> you did. Wow, that's that's an excellent sabor, man. It's um a lot um. Wow, that's really it's hard to explain exactly. Like maybe like a sour wood. If you ever ever had sour wood honey back up in the states, it tastes like that. That that was awesome. My wife will love this honey. Wow, really, really, truly amazing. Very friendly. Yeah. And and I know there's you vegans out there, some of you, and I totally respect that. You will not consume this. But you can certainly respect putting it all over this farm so it can increase fruit yield so you guys can just dive into the fruits. You can eat fruits until you're, until you're like, happy. I hope you're already happy, though. All right. Wow. You can see the little babies in here. There's little eggs right in here. I, I mean, I don't know if it's hard. That's right there. It look like little eggs. I mean, it's just truly, truly incredible. And if you go, I tell you what, with these meliponas, almost all of them, I've noticed one thing. When you go into the nest, into the middle of the nest of, of all these guys, they have a beautiful spiral staircase in the middle of them where the workers, it, it's kind of like that's their like little middle corridor to walk around and then there's different rooms and stuff like that. But they always have this, right, the spiral, espiral, in through the middle where the queen's at the bottom and the workers are at the top and they fly out. I mean, and again, we talked about the spiral as a sacred geometric shape. And uh, these honey, they don't read books about this. They don't like, oh, we have to set up a vortex and a spiral. They don't do that. They don't read a book. They, they just do it. Intuition, total intuition, the sixth sense. These guys have it. They are tapped in little beings, that's for sure. Otra cosa es información de este tipo? Bueno, esta abeja vive a ras de suelo, como dijimos. Cerca de las raíces de los árboles. They, they, like, they like it down. We talked about that. Es muy dócil, o sea, muy fácil para uh, uh, extraerla. They're real friendly. So, I mean, as you can see, they, they don't even, they're like, hey, welcome to my home. You know, I mean, if we were small enough, we could go in there, we could have dinner with them. But we're not. Bueno, ellos producen, esto es la cera. El material que utilizan alrededor del nido, puede observar aquí que hay partes de árboles viejos, uh -huh. uh, yep. resina de árboles. Yeah, the, these bees are unbelievable because they take the the tree that they're the trees that they're nearest to. They use the leaves. They use a little bit of the wood. You can see a little bit of the wood all to construct a really well constructed nest. I mean, you wouldn't mess around with this nest. It's actually very well constructed. Again, they didn't read a book and figure out. You know, they didn't have tools or anything to do this. They just came in and they know how to construct their own nest and have their own little family. It's, it's, it's truly. I, I find bees absolutely fascinating. I don't know about you guys, but they really fascinate me. So we've got more YouTubes to come because the goal of mine is to get as many of these meliponas on the farm as possible. 
And now we've got five boxes and four different types. We've got your Mariolas. We've got El Negro, Bea, otra vez. Arragli. Arragli. Right? We got the Varsino, right? Mm -hmm. The Varsinos. And we've got this is the Cujo. Culo de Wey. Culo de Wey. Four already. The English translations, guys, sorry, I don't know. I don't know them yet at this point. But I'll, I'll look into it and, and help you out with that in future YouTubes when we start putting in more types here. Okay. Recuerda que tenemos un, en un árbol, un jicoticongo, una especie en peligro de extinción en Costa Rica. Correct. We've got another one, but we don't have a box on it yet, but it's actually very, very rare. And it's down in our exercise trail. We haven't done a YouTube on it, but we will in the future. They're called Congos. We don't have a box yet because they're in the middle of a beautiful saba tree. Right? It's a saba tree? Or already mm -hmm. saba? I feel cancel. So it's a, it's a saba tree. So so we we can not gonna cut down the tree just for the bees. That's not not cool and not really using nature at all. So we're just we're gonna wait until that tree comes down or gets really old, um, and it's ready and it, it tells us it's ready to extract those those congos and then we'll put them in a nice box, and and they'll be nice and preserved forever here on this farm. So, my notorious sidekick Harold from Costa Rica, signing off, guys. Much love to you, Farmer Life family.